And good morning and welcome to today's webinar on understanding Zinner barriers and their selection. My name is Ross Allen and I'm responsible for Scotland at Temo Limited. In today's webinar, I'd like to cover the basics of Zinner barriers, how they work and why we need them. We'll look at where they're placed within the intrinsically safe system and what we require to validate and verify the loop calculation. We'll also look at selecting Zinner Barrier using the Georgian Selection Guide, complete with reference examples for multiple applications. We'll finish off the webinar with a questions and answers session. Let's look at the definition of a Zinner Barrier. It's an associated device or equipment that is installed in the safe area. It is designed to limit the amount of energy that could appear in an electrical circuit passing through the hazardous area. As any intrinsic safety equipment, the Zener barrier allows cables to short circuit to each other or to metallic parts connected to ground without any danger. The components. The Zener barrier consists of the following components. A Zener diode to limit the voltage, resistors to limit the current, and fuses to protect the components. The operation. The Zinner barrier interfacing mode differs from others as there's no galvanic isolation. Cables that pass through the hazardous area share common features with those of the safe area. This implies equipotential ground mounting of the barrier. It is important to ensure the equipotential ground between the interface product, the barrier and the PLC to avoid the occurrence of a potentially harmful ground currents. Let's explore how a Zener barrier limits over voltage or over current to a safe level. The Zener diode is the main component of the Zener barrier, and it is important that the voltage rating of the Zener diodes must be less than or equal to the required safe level. If a fault or over voltage occurs between the terminals at M and N in the safe area, the Zener diode limits this voltage to a safe level and the voltage delivered to the hazardous area will not exceed the total Zener voltage indicated at VZ. It is very important that the Zener is properly grounded. When a Zener diode conducts as a result of over voltage, the fuse will protect the Zener diode due to the overcurrent during conduction. The Zener barrier will also allow a short circuit between the supply terminals in the intrinsically safe device installed in the hazardous location without creating a spark which may be dangerous. In case of any short circuit, the resistor limits the current to an acceptable value, which will not be sufficient to create a dangerous spark provided that the Zener barrier is correctly connected to ground. Single barriers and double barriers. A wide range of barriers has been developed to fit all types of installations. They differ by their electrical circuit diagrams, parameters, and functions. The electrical circuit diagram differs from one barrier to another, and there are two main types of circuit diagram, single barriers and double barriers. Let's touch on intrinsic safety. An explosion requires fuel, oxygen, and a source of ignition. Intrinsic safety removes the source of ignition. Just look at an intrinsic safety protection technique and the definition of intrinsic safety. An intrinsically safe circuit is a circuit in which no spark or thermal effect will be produced that is capable of causing the ignition of a defined explosive atmosphere in the given operating additions specified by standards. An intrinsically safe circuit in opposition to other types of protection in which the explosion protection is always related to the individual apparatus. The protection type intrinsic safety takes the complete circuit into account. An intrinsically safe system as an assembly of interconnected, intrinsically safe apparatus in the hazardous area, associated apparatus in the safe area, and interconnecting cables. 
these apparatus need to be verified in the loop calculation. The purpose of the intrinsically safe loop calculation is to confirm that the selected combination of intrinsically safe apparatus, associated apparatus, and interconnecting cables are forming an intrinsically safe loop that can be used in the hazardous area. The intrinsically safe device found in the hazardous area is an electrical device in which all the circuits are intrinsically safe. But an associated device found in the safe area is an electrical device where only part of the circuit is intrinsically safe. Let's look at the zone system. When any electrical equipment is used in an atmosphere that is flammable gases or vapor, and flammable liquids or combustible dusts, there will be a risk of fire or explosion. The zone system is used to classify these hazardous areas. In the zone system, the hazardous locations are classified based on the frequency and duration of the occurrence of an explosive atmosphere in a particular location. Let's look at the hazardous area classification of gases. Releases of flammable gases and vapors will usually result in flammable atmospheres. And these areas are classified as zone zero, zone one, and zone two. Zone zero, where flammable atmosphere is present continuously for long periods. Zone one, where a flammable atmosphere is likely in normal operation occasionally. And zone two, where an explosive atmosphere is present less than 10 hours per year. Here we have a few examples of the zone system. We can see two areas on the slide. That would be zone zero, which is the two flammable liquid storage tanks, one below ground and one on the truck trailer. The zone zero will be the space above the flammable liquid in the tank. As the tank fills and empties, air is constantly being drawn in and expelled. This would create an explosive atmosphere for much or all of the time. Zone zero are generally easy to define. They are usually being inside vessels where there is a high probability of an explosive gas air mixture being present. Zone one on the example shows as the filling area of a petrol pump and nozzle to a vehicle. Vapor and mist can form occasionally while filling and using the pump causing an explosive atmosphere. Zone two would be the forecourt of the petrol station. And any definition is the least hazardous of the zoned areas. By its very nature, zone two is the zone where an explosive atmosphere will be created by unlikely conditions. Most outdoor hazardous areas are predominantly zone two. Let's look at the hazardous area classification for combustible dust. The zone system also covers combustible dust under zone 20, zone 21, and zone 22. Dust zoning is much simpler than zoning for gases and vapors. This is partly because dust rarely moves further than a meter from the source of release due to its tendency to settle on the ground. The zones are set as zone 20 as the high probability of explosive atmosphere, zone 21 as medium probability, and zone 22 is the lowest probability. Here we have a combustible dust graph. Uh, when material is ground into a fine dust or powder, the dust or powder will form an explosive atmosphere with air. Here are some examples of flammable dusts classified as group A and their role in causing explosions. You will see that electrical equipment is responsible for 5% of the sources of ignition. The ATEX directive marking. Here you can see an ATEX marking and we can break each segment down into the following. We have group two for surface industry. Equipment category would be gas. The protection is intrinsic safety, the principle. The IA stands for zone zero, one or two. We have gas or vapor classification, hydrogen, and we have the temperature class T5 
which is maximum 100 degrees Celsius surface temperature. The intrinsically safe apparatus is an apparatus must be safe even in the presence of defects or failure of components or connections between components. Two levels of intrinsic safety devices are used to classify. If the equipment remains safe in the presence of a single fault or any combination of two defects, the material is said to be ATEX IA category. If the equipment remains safe in the presence of a single fault, it is classed as ATEX IB category. The intrinsically safe loop calculation. The purpose of the intrinsically safe loop calculation is to confirm that the selected combination of intrinsically safe apparatus, associated apparatus, and interconnecting cables are forming an intrinsically safe loop that can be used in the hazardous area. The following information is required to establish the electrical parameters required to calculate this loop. Full references, technical data sheets, instruction manuals, and the ATEX certificate of the, of the equipment. Electrical parameters required for the intrinsically safe equipment will be the input parameters for voltage, current, power, capacitance, and inductance. For the associated apparatus, we require the output parameters for voltage, current, power, capacitance, and inductance. Verification of the capacitance and inductance for the interconnecting cable will have to be calculated using parameters from the cable type and length, taking into account the linear capacitance and linear inductance. The verification can now be carried out by using the following rule. The output voltage, output current, and output power on the barrier in the safe area must be less than or equal to the input voltage, input current, and input power on the equipment in the hazardous area. Verification of the capacitance and the inductance will be the input capacitance and inductance on the equipment in the hazardous area is less than or equal to the output capacitance of the barrier in the safe area. Let's look at an example of how to choose a model of the BZG Xenobarriers from Georgia. As discussed earlier in the loop calculation slide, to establish a suitable barrier, you will re require the following documentation. Complete reference of the associated equipment and of the equipment situated in the hazardous area. Technical data sheet or instruction sheet for the equipment in the hazardous area to find the metrological data. An ATEC certificate for the interfaces and equipment in the hazardous area to find the intrinsic safety parameters and the equipment markings. And finally, the cable characteristics for capacitance and inductance per kilometer and resistance per kilometer. The Georgian BZG selection guide is available covering data on inputs and outputs and detailed reference circuits on specific applications. Detailed specifications on metrological parameters, intrinsically safe parameters, and electrical circuit diagrams are available for all models. Let's look at a step-by-step -step guide to selecting the barrier. Step one is to determine the type of signal to interface from the system. Depending on your type of signal and equipment type, in this case, we'll look at the pressure and temperature transmitter 40 20 milliamp input, and we can see it's an analog input. We would now look under the analog input section within the selection guide. Step two is to find the reference diagram. So you find the reference diagram corresponding to the type of signal. Uh, also note all the various possibilities that are available. Step three is to determine the right reference by using the tables, metrological parameters, and intrinsically safe parameters. And full details on intrinsically safe parameters and electrical data are available for each specific model.
the voltage drop across terminals. And associated equipment always has an internal resistance with the terminals connected to the intrinsically safe equipment. This resistance can affect the operation of the connected intrinsically safe equipment by generating a voltage drop at its terminals. So careful calculation must be done to ensure that there is sufficient power at the field device in the hazardous zone. The effective supply voltage must never be lower than the minimum supply voltage supplied by the manufacturer. Let's look at general specifications and composition. The components of the Georgian barriers are individually tested according to selection criteria imposed by the standard and the metrological characteristics. After wiring, the assembly of components is coated with a resin that provides mechanical retention and protects the barrier against any modification of the nature of the components or their wiring. After coating, each component undergoes a new individual test to verify that the resin has not destroyed the electrical characteristics during polymerization. A final test permits verification of the electrical and intrinsic safety parameters before packing. The general specifications. The BZG Xena barriers from Georgian are available in IP20 polycarbonate housing in a Omega type thin rail mount. Options include current signaling LED on the front panel, uh, available depending on model. Thin rail isolator, so it's possible to insulate the thin BZG bracket from the rail with an insulation kit and a removable front cover for marking support. Electrical connections uh, has removable screw terminals, 0.2 millimeter squared to two and a half millimeter squared, color coded blue terminals for outputs to the ATEX area and black terminals for the outputs to the safe area. The ground connection is a fixed screw terminal for four, four millimeter square cable. Just a reminder that the ground terminal must be connected to an equipotential ground network with a wire with four millimeter square minimum wire selection. On this slide, we can see the ATEX and IACEX certifications, as well as the safety integrity level certification for the BZGs in the barriers. An explosives atmosphere poster is available to assist with the identifying ATEX markings for equipment installed in ATEX zones and markings for associated equipment. Should you be interested in receiving these documents, please contact me after the webinar. Well, this concludes the presentation segment of the webinar this morning, and I'd like to thank you for all attending. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Ross and my details are below. Should you want to get in contact with any inquiries on Xena barriers or any intrinsic safety inquiries you may have. We can now move on to a questions and answers session where we'll be joined by our partners from Georgian.